Hey everyone, welcome back to the Mark Loeffler Experience. Uh, we have a great show here for you today. We got George L. Masri. He's just bought a five unit property in Welland, Ontario. We're gonna go through why he bought it, how he bought it, what his plan is, um, returns, all that fun stuff. Uh, George is a real estate agent in my office in Oakville, Ontario. He's also a real estate investor who I've known for a number of years. And yeah, I mean, just recently he started buying some bigger multifamily stuff. And so we're going to go through it. And guys, if you're new to the channel, thanks so much for coming. Make sure you subscribe down below. And guys, smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Also, I was told that the new YouTube algorithm counts comments more than likes. So if you guys can just go ahead and make that comment down below, is this a deal that you would do? Um, you know, maybe you got some ideas for George. Guys, throw it down below. If you like it, comment. If you don't like it, comment. And let's get started. George, welcome, my friend. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Mark. My pleasure. All right. So, I, I mean, I know a little bit about the five plex. And the one thing I know is, well, you got bed bugs, right? Yes, I definitely have bed bugs. <laughs> right. I mean, what was my comment to you when I found out you had bed bugs? Uh, good. I, you said it's a good thing, right? It means no. Make money? I don't remember. Well, I, there, well, there's that too, but I, I basically told you that now, hey, congratulations. Now you're a real oh, real yeah. estate investor. Right. Um, I'm, I remember when I used to write an article for um, Canadian Real Estate Magazine and they were, I had written an article saying, hey, you're not a real you're not a real investor until you've had bad bugs. Yeah. And they wouldn't publish that article. <laughs> well, uh, so now I've had the first property I bought had fleas and cockroaches. Um, the second property had mice and now I'm dealing with bed bugs. So, so you're the king of pests. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So I don't now know. We got a new nickname for George. <laughs> I don't know what else there is to deal with, but I think. Oh, wait, wait first. till you get rats. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah there's always rats, my friend. Yeah, those must be fun. Oh yeah. Yeah. Good. All right, well, I mean, tell us about the fiveplex, my friend. Yeah, so uh, as you mentioned, it's in Welland. I purchased it off market, it was a private deal. I approached the seller directly, was able to get it under contract for 475. Um, and then after doing the home inspection, doing certain things, I was able to negotiate a little bit further down to 445. So that was my nice. purchase price, yeah. Um, Aside from that, it's uh, full, well, it was fully tenanted, but luckily one of the tenants left on June 1st, just before I took possession. So I'm working on that unit now, getting some rentals done, getting some plumbing done, uh, just dealing with some of the issues that the, the previous landlord neglected for a very long time. She was the owner for 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So, uh, purchase for 445. I know you got a spreadsheet. Why don't you try to yeah. share that, uh, with us now? And, uh, if we screw out, we'll edit this out. Or I know Josh likes it when I say we're going to edit stuff out. So yeah. uh, are you able uh, to see my screen here? Yeah. Okay, cool. There we go. Um, Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. So Look at there, technology, eh? Yeah. Um, so there, there's my property there. Purchase price, you'll see 445. So I'll just go over the numbers quickly. That's 20% uh, down. So the mortgage rate initially was 3.38. I got a variable for prime minus 0.5. Nice. Um, so it actually dropped. It's at 1.88 right now. Very oh, I, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's free, right? Like I, I, every mortgage I get is always variable. Um, yeah. And I was getting them better when they were thing. And like I'm prime minus 0.9 or prime minus 0.1 on all my variables right now. Awesome. I'm waiting till they go negative and they pay me money. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. And that's something that's, um, I know like a lot of people are talking about that, that, that you might see negative interest rates in the near future or I don't in, know, next years. in the U S I, I mean, I don't think we'll see it in Canada. I, I think yeah. our, I don't think our governor is going to do that. Yeah. Anyways, so, we'll have to yeah. see. So anyways, closing costs were about eight grand, um, but a hundred thousand dollar investment. The income right now, so you could take away one of the units. Uh, I forget which one, but it's uh, 3850 minus, let's say, 800 bucks, so about three grand. I'm going to be able to increase all of these rents by about 400 bucks a piece, more or less. So about 60%, 55% overall? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So the, the rents will be about 5,500, something like that when I'm, when I'm done renovating. And guys, like when I look at a property, 
my goal, or listen, I, I want to have at least 40% lift in reps, right? So it, for this instance, I'd want to be able to get that basically almost a thousand bucks across the board and if, or maybe 1,025. I mean, I'm not doing, going to do the math here mm -hmm. and yet. Um, you know, obviously you're going to get that, right? Cause you're going to get it up to 5,500 you said. Yeah, more or less pretty much. Okay. Yeah. So, um, these are just some of the numbers I factor. I know everybody does things a little bit differently. Uh, some people put property management in here. I didn't because I'm doing that initially. And then later on I'll probably get a property manager. I mean, you have 8% um, for vacancies. I mean, yeah, that, that's pretty much including a, a property manager in there. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I tried to be a little bit conservative with the numbers. So I've got repairs in there. Um, so that's my mortgage amount, property taxes, um, home insurance is about 250. So uh, all inclusive right now rents. And the plan is, uh, some of the units have sub panels. So I will be, I'm going to have to get separate hydrometers. Oh, you don't have to, you can go to like something like wise meters, W Y S E. I've talked about it in a couple of videos before, uh, and they'll do sub metering for you. Really? I had no, okay. So I've heard of them. I didn't yeah. know that I could bypass getting sub meters through them. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the beauty things is they charge the tenant directly and you can put a, um, administrative fee on there for yourself. Cool. So as, <laughs> as long as, as long as there's a, a separate or like a sub panel in the unit, then you can go through them. Yeah. Because if you have a, a, a separate line going up, then yeah, that doesn't have to change anything. You just plop that on there and away you go. Cool. Okay. That's an awesome tip. I'll definitely reach out to them and, and see if I could do that. Um, so I've got my HELOC here, the interest that I'm paying on it. And then I so also, you, so let's just talk about that for a second. So yeah. you bought it, you have, was it 20% down? I assume was it 20, 25? Yeah. 20%. Okay. Um, yeah. And, and that 20% came off your HELOC, which is your home equity line of credit, correct? Yeah. Yeah. The interest rates are super low right now. So, um, like the payments are pretty, pretty good. Yeah. Well, basically. So, but basically you're buying this, you own a 100% mm -hmm. and you have no investors and you're buying it zero money down. Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Right. And guys, I know I just did the video on Friday about how to, uh, buying a property zero money down. And I totally forgot about this. So this is another way you're buying a property zero money down. Like you're using equity and you're using your credit. Yes. Yet again, George has no money out of his pocket to do this. All right, continue. Yeah. So, um, I was working with a, an investment coach. A lot of people know Quentin D'Souza. Um, I know he's well, we, pretty we, we, we've had him on the channel. He has, yeah. he is the most, watched interview we've done on here. Maybe George will beat him. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how much people like numbers. Um, so I factored in um, unsecured lines of credit, which I, which I thankfully signed up for a few months ago before COVID hit, because I think right now it'd be really hard to get access to that kind of credit. Um, it's it's yeah. starting to, it's like I was just talking to my banker yesterday, it's starting to open up again. They just got sl so slammed at the beginning with deferrals and the small business stuff. Like they literally couldn't process it. Like, I mean, I have a guy that does the back end uh, for TD and the government gave them three days to get everything online and to do everything. And they're like, yeah, that's a six, it was a six month project. Right. Yeah. So they just got so slammed. It was all hands on deck. So it's starting to come out of it now where they're starting to be able to process things again. So mm -hmm. who knows? Yeah. So, um, just moving forward, I, I'm using some of my unsecured lines to do the renos because, uh, there's quite a bit that needs to be done. Um, so I've just kind of factored in a, a, some of the numbers here and, and built it into the expenses so that, uh, I, I know what to expect. So as of right now with the old numbers, with the old rental income, it was about $84 negative and that's considering an 8% vacancy and 6% repair, but with the new rent, it's going to be positive once again. And that's just with one unit being turned over. So as I turn over more and more units, obviously that cash flow is going to grow and eventually I'm going to be able to refinance it. Awesome. So you're renovating a unit. What's it going to cost you to renovate that unit right now? Well, it's hard to say exactly because I'm still like uncovering some issues that I didn't know about. I found out there is like galvanized plumbing. There's certain things that, um, that are adding to the expense, but uh, this unit's probably going to cost as of right now, about 21,000 to renovate. 21,000. Then you throw in, well, I mean, if you have to do the galvanized plumbing throughout and all that, I mean, that's probably another 35 to 50, depending. Like so 35. The whole. 
Yeah. Oh yeah, to do the overall whole thing. do do the whole house, right? Yeah. Well, I, I don't know if I'm gonna do the whole house all at once because, um, like, uh, yeah, there's a bunch of tenants living there and whatever. Well, I mean, here's the thing: if you're doing that, you can do separate water lines to each thing, and then you can separate uh, water too through Wise Meter. Oh, cool. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. You can get you can get everything off your plate, man. Have no expenses on this thing. That would be awesome. Yeah. All, all right. So twenty one thousand. Let's just call it twenty five sure. each. So you're gonna be one hundred twenty five thousand in rentals. Let's call like take outside of that another twenty five for plumbing, some electrical. So you're gonna probably be what one seventy, one seventy five on a rental. Yeah, somewhere in the in that range. Okay. Well, so you so you bought it for four forty five. You're gonna be one seventy five on yeah. a rental. Yeah. What's, what's your after repair value are you estimating? Okay, it's really tough to know that because I, I did some research to see if there was anything that was fully renovated nearby that sold in the last year or two years. I couldn't really find anything like it. Uh, so if we go based on a cap rate, uh, it's going to be like close to 800,000, maybe even higher, right? Yeah. If we just go based on a 5% cap. And that's 160 a door. I mean, you're going to have to go outside your area to find that. And, you know, you might have to, I don't, I, yeah. The, the, obviously the appraisal is going to be the issue. Yeah. Um, and, and you're probably want, going to be one of the first yet. You know, I mean, obviously, even if you get, so you're going to be into it for about 620. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if you get something like a 700 to start off with, and then a couple of years down the road, right? Like yeah. you can pay back your line of credits and stuff like that and, and get a new interest. Exactly. And the cash flow, even if I did get it reappraised for seven, the cash flow is going to be really good on it. Um, yeah. So I'll be able to whatever, like do whatever I want and pay off the lines of credit with that cash flow or whatever I decide to do. So, well, I mean, even now you're going to start cash flowing, you know, what, a couple hundred dollars a month. So you're going to definitely yeah. obviously be paying down the line with that. And, and that, I mean, dude, that this is a great looking property. Yeah, exactly. And the, and the idea, like, I, I like the idea of investing in a place like Welland where you can still find these opportunities for under 500 grand, less yeah. than, yeah, like less than a hundred thousand a door. Um, and, and I know some people that have invested in larger projects there. I have a friend that has a 21 unit building and it's increased like crazy. So that's what inspired me to look into that area. Yeah. Welland, Brantford, like the Woodstock's of the world. Uh, lots of people are out there doing this small, smaller areas. I mean, I, I, I got a, a buddy from Mississauga he invests in Bracebridge and yeah. this exact same thing, right? Yeah. I was actually on the podcast. I recently uh, interviewed someone who invests in Timmins, which yeah. I'm not saying necessarily that that's like a place that I would look into, but the cash flow that she generates from that, from that place is ridiculous. Well, I mean, I, I'm going to have Elizabeth Kelly on here in two weeks, I think two or three weeks. And yeah, she's like, she's in Kirkland Lake, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm sure their cash flow is unbelievable. And I, I was talking to a guy investing in Saskatchewan. So guys, it's getting out of that box, right? It's getting out and looking at it. I mean, we, I just shared the numbers um, in the market update uh, yesterday for Wednesday. And like uh, Thunder Bay was the largest, um, was the largest uh, uh, increase, 22% year over year increase in Thunder Bay. Yeah. By the way, should I stop sharing at this point? <laughs> um, I don't know, guys. Have you guys all got enough of the numbers? Is that? Uh... <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's do not you, much else. To look. Do yeah. you have your um, after repair uh, spreadsheet done, or? Uh, I think I did it. Yeah, I think I got oh, it right. here. So yeah. So uh, it's it's probably not going to be 100% accurate. I, I just roughly did it just to kind of see what I'd have left in if if that were the case. Um, yeah. Yeah. So the numbers aren't a hundred percent. Like I have 80% of ARV. It might be 75%, might be 70%. But I, I, I was looking at somewhere around a break even number, uh, given, uh, what was it here? What did I have? $800,000 purchase or uh, re refinance, uh, amount. Yeah. And in a perfect world, if you get 20, if you get 80%, then you get yeah. 40. Exactly. And then I got, I put a hundred, about 150 grand in, in renovations. Um, okay. So then I'd be left with about 20 grand invested in the property. I mean, 20 grand invested and, and what's your, what's your cash flow going to look like then? Uh, 921. $1,000 a month. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. 1300 or four, 13, almost $1,400 if there's no vacancies. Yeah, exactly. And then you can factor like at this point, I'll probably have a property manager, uh, 
taking care of this. So yeah, it, about a thousand bucks a month. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, well, lots George, of potential. Man. Yeah, that, that, that's a great deal. I love it. And, you know, and, and you found this by knocking on doors, right? Uh, it was actually a marketing campaign, a print flyer. Okay. Yeah. Like, like the yellow letter campaign, like Ron Legrand styles? Uh, I don't know who that is, but yeah. sure. <laughs> well, basically say I'll buy your house. So like, what yeah. did you do? You looked up um, like landlords type thing or people who own different properties or rental properties or yeah, it's a combination of things. Like I, I used to drive by a lot and just kind of take notes on on properties that I like. If I see separate hydrometers or I see five mailboxes or whatever, just take some notes down. Uh, send letter, especially if they look rough. Send them a letter. I tell them that I'm willing to buy, uh, that I am a realtor, but that I'm interested in purchasing their property. And I, I got a couple of responses from that. Nice. And yeah. and so you bought one yourself, and then another one you actually it was, you sold to an investor, right? That was different. That was actually an MLS deal, but I do have okay. another one that I'm looking at in St. Catharines. Uh, it's, it's a fourplex that, I, that I'm really interested in, but I'm uh, still figuring that one out. Fair enough. Yeah. Well, I mean, George, anything else before? Like, I mean, I, I, like, I love this deal, man. It's a, congratulations. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate it. Um, so guys, so how do people connect with you, George? If they, if they like this and they want to know more, how do people connect with you? Yeah, you can go on my website, welloff.ca. Uh, there's lots of information there. I also have a podcast. If you want to hear a little bit more about these types of deals, I interview people like Mark, like Quentin, all sorts of people. So that's the Well Off podcast available on multiple platforms. You can check that out. And then on Instagram, you're Well Off. <laughs> yeah, Well Off X. Everything's Well, well Off. X. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So, I mean, we'll, we'll put every, we'll, we'll link all that in the description below. Um, yeah. I don't know. Anything else you want to add before we head out? Sure. I'll just put it this way. Like, first of all, having a coach was extremely beneficial in this case because there were so many times where I, I could have walked away. I, I would have been afraid to do it, but having somebody who's extremely experienced and knowledgeable and just somebody who was uh, able to like walk me through this and make me feel like it's going to be okay. It's really important to do. So if you are considering hiring a coach, I would suggest spending the money, do it. It's really going to help you get ahead. Yeah. And we'll put a link to um, the, cause Quentin was your coach, right? Yes. Uh, so we'll put a link to Quentin's interview down below and he has all his contact information on that one. And again, hopefully you beat him for the most watched and then. Yeah. Can, I hope so can, too. Yeah. <laughs> we'll put yeah. that, we'll, we'll put that intention out there. Yeah. Sounds all right, good. buddy. Well, George, thanks so much for coming on sharing this property, man. I love it. And guys, yeah. it, it just goes to show you that like, you don't have, like I'm buying, like four million dollar properties george is buying a four hundred forty thousand dollar property yeah george is going to make a hell of a lot of money doing this mm -hmm. right so there's different scales here and there's different ways to do it that's 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 the whole point of me bringing on these different people so you can see that there's different opportunity out there mm -hmm. um so my request is guys out there if you're investing in somewhere like halifax or saskatchewan or something like that i'd love to have you guys on love to look at numbers on an existing deal um, go through it. Uh, us even let's, let's do it. I've had a couple guys from Tampa, from uh, Omaha on and you know, guys, there's deals everywhere. You just, I mean, it's, it's effort. It's like when Mandy Branham was on talking about how to find joint venture partners, right? That was a hundred percent feet on the street, hard effort, putting the work in, finding the JV partners, finding the deals. So George, I think you're a perfect example of that. You went out and you made it happen. I, congratulations, my friend. And I look forward to seeing you and, and your future success. We'll have you back on in like maybe six months and maybe by then we can go do a walk through the property and you can show it to me. Sure. That sounds good. All right, buddy. All right. Take care.